Who can say what that verse means? Somebody would like to explain it a little bit? It doesn't have to be too technical, but just say why we say it and what it means. When covered by the darkness. Here, use the word. One of the ways that we'll uh, stay in touch with each other today is by um, always using the microphone when you're going to speak in the audience. And we'll have a lot of back and forth, and so we can hear everybody and, and everyone online can hear it too. Please go ahead. I'm covered by the darkness of illusion, by the grace of my spiritual master, including my eyes, and now I can see. Yeah, along this line. Shalakaya. It's kind of like instrument to clear the eyes. So the spiritual master, who's a representative of Krishna, and who presents the Shastra, is a one who helps us to come out of darkness. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that it's not automatic that we can come out of ignorance. We need intervention. Where did he say that? When he was teaching Sanatana Goswami. And he said, Maya Buddha Jivan Mahasvata Krishna Jnana. Jivari Krishna Kripaya Koila, Krishna Veda Puran. It was the very purpose of Veda Vyas to make the Vedas so that the living entities could come out of darkness. Otherwise, without intervention, they don't come out. Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Could somebody say something about that verse? Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam. Yes. Just pass the mic. Uh, like, so Sri Chaitanya Manodishtam, uh, uh, Rupa Goswami understood the, uh, the mindset of uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Manodishtam, uh, what is the second line? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And he, Rupa Goswami, uh, established, shared his knowledge on the earth with others. Very substantially, too, right? I took the treble Nana Shastra Vichara Naika Nikanot to compile all the Vedic teachings to show the essence of all the processes that are mentioned in the Vedas, which is devotional service. And he and the other Goswamis did that in such a way that anyone could follow. All over the world, people can take it out. When I think of this way in which he understood the heart of the Lord and what wished to fulfill it, Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam, he understood what his purpose was and what his heart was. That when we went to Ultatanga Junction Road in Calcutta, when we go on the Yatra, we started going to Calcutta as one of the places for pilgrimage. And I personally find it the most enlivening of all the pilgrimage places because Srila Prabhupada's birthplace is there. Place where he got on the Jaladuta. And my favorite is Ultatanga Junction Road. From the time I was a Brahmachari and we were on book distribution, I always heard about Ultatanga because it was one of our battle cries that Prabhupada has mentioned how Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had said we were better off in Ultatanga. Ultatanga was a slum, but the devotees were happily engaged in preaching and they were all crowded into one little place. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said that they barely had enough money to buy rice, which is an amazing statement since it's in Bengal. Rice seems to be pretty readily available there. But his mood, Srila Bhaktisanta's mood was, after they had purchased a gigantic building, they actually didn't purchase it, it was given by one of his disciples who gave his life's blood and all his money to build the flagship temple in Calcutta. How many of you have been there? So that, just a few of us. And afterwards, the devotees were concerned, apparently, about who got to stay in which room and other kinds of 
symptoms of being attached to the building and the trappings of success in the Gaudiya Math. And he, he said we were better off in Ultatunga. Like when we were in that rundown place in the slum, but we were all preaching. And so then it takes us back to that place and Prabhupada had gone there. Our Prabhupada had visited when he was a student and he met, met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta there. And there he had walked up the steps. You can think of that fateful time when Prabhupada went there and was invited by a friend to come and meet Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. His, his friend said, that is Prabhupada's friend said, this isn't an ordinary sadhu. And this is one of the one of the statements in the Shastra is that it doesn't take very long to attain perfection by meeting a sadhu. So remember how Prabhupada walked up the stairs and the same stairs are there. They're preserved. They rebuilt the place, but they saved the stones that Prabhupada walked on. They saved as many of the original stones there as possible. And whatever they were, they were replacing, or if they have replaced there, they used original materials. That is, the same types of things that the building was made with previously. So Prabhupada, imagine he stepped on, he walked up about 12 steps. And you can see the first step he put his foot on. That's the direction going upwards towards his Guru Maharaj that brought us all together here. Haribo. Haribo! Just uh, the impetus to walk up to meet a sadhu. And he, he stepped on that first step, and then the second step, third step, fourth step, 12 steps up. And then he went before his to be. Guru Maharaj. And as he was offering obeisances, before he could come back up again, that's the Lava Matra. You know this verse? Sadhu Sangha Sadhu Sangha Sarva Shastri Khoi Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi Khoi. So what does it mean? Somebody say? But you have to take the mic. Where's the mic? Okay. Probably Bawam, you want to say? Yes. Bawam, uh, Bawam, no credit without mic. Only the second with the subtle we can attain perfection. Thank you very much. Yes. Lava Matra indicates a fourteenth of a second. So maybe that's the time Prabhupada was offering the basances and just as he was sitting back up again, then his Guru Maharaj was saying to him that you should preach this message to the Westerners and take it in English. And uh, Prabhupada was surprised of how much he was, he resonated with that. Although he put some arguments, he said, to Shri Prabhupada, to his uh, guru, that uh, we need to be independent in India before people will listen to us. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta was resolute. So this morning we heard about the association of sadhus. Remember, Satam Satam. Satam prasangam bama virya sambhido bhavanti trikkarna rasayana kata tash joshanad ashwa pavargavart mani shradarati or pakti ayupra mishrati means when you associate with sadhus then you'll advance in devotional service and then there's three progressive stages that are mentioned. They're very general categories, but he says shraddha, rati, bhakti. These three things happen step by step. So shraddha, you know what this word shraddha means, anybody? Faith. 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 So the word breaks down like this. Shrad means the heart. And <coughs> da is an active verb. It means where you place something. So literally, shraddha, everyone say shraddha. Shraddha. Shraddha means where you place your heart. What are you putting your heart into? Who here has ever put their heart into something? I mean... You were just carried away. Your heart pulled you in a certain direction and you were fully dedicated to something or someone. Nobody? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The rest of you have been, haven't been getting out of that. 
it's natural for us human beings to give our heart somewhere. Of course, any living entity has a propensity to love and give him or herself to others, to another especially. You can see it in the animals. They love their offspring. They'll protect them. They'll die for them. Grizzly bears, they'll kill you if you get near the young, the mom or dad. And so there's a natural way that we give our hearts in one place or another. This is shraddha. But in reality, our heart is meant for Krishna because he's the, the source of everything and everyone. And he's the reservoir of all relationships, loving relationships. So shraddha shabde vishras kahe sudri dhanas choy krishne bhakti koya sarvaparma krita hoy this is the definition of shraddha. So shraddha shabde vishras kahe so this firm conviction develops in the heart that just by doing bhakti, nothing else required, only bhakti. What's bhakti anyway? Could somebody give me a quick definition? You could quote a verse. If you quote a verse, you get 20 points. You, and, but you don't get any points without the microphone. You have to demand the mic before you speak, and then if you speak the verse, then you get 20 points. Can you do more? Vandanam, Archanam. I don't know, maybe there are these. Okay, anyway, uh, very good. 20 points you get. Who spoke the verse? In reply to? What did Hirani Kashipu want to hear about? <laughs> Such. 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 He wants to hear about himself. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, kinda. He sent Pralad off to business school and he wanted to hear about how he was gonna make money and take over the world and politics. But then he asked him, So what'd you learn in school? And he said, I learned about Krishna. How are you Krishna, Dad? So <laughs> His father wasn't very happy. So, it's a the firm conviction, an ever-increasing conviction, Shraddha, that when I do bhakti, when I just serve Krishna without any hesitation, no motivation, no deviation, then everything is perfectly done. Sarva karma kritahoy. All other things that I need to do, like what kind of things do you need to do? Life. What are the necessities? According to Maslow's uh, pyramid of hierarchy of needs, what do you have to do? Eat. Eat. You have to eat, right? Do you guys get to eat to this today? Yeah. Krishna fed you again? Yes, yes. Right. I did. Yay! How do you go? Yeah, Krishna feeds all the living entities. It's Nitya Nityanam, Chaitanas Chaitananam, Eko Bhavanam, Yoga Kama. This is a common theme that the Shastra explaining how Krishna is taking care of everyone. The prophet puts it like this. He said, when you go to prison, they feed you. Anybody ever here go to prison? <laughs> Come on, you're not preaching hard enough then. Yeah, there is, Maharaj. <laughs> did, they, did they try to feed you in there? <laughs> 30 or 40 <laughs> times only. <laughs> you joined Hare Krishna Eight movement. Different countries. <laughs> different countries. Before 1980 or after, before that, you went to jail sometimes. In jail, they feed you. They have to. They give you regular meals. In fact, I know a devotee well. He's initiated. I went to visit him in the Arizona prison. He's in for life. No possibility of parole. And he uh, wears orange. Much like that. <laughs> Keeps his head shaved. And he has his books in his cell. Very regulated schedule. Of everybody up at a certain time. Everybody to sleep. Lights out. No drugs. No illicit sex. No, no gambling allowed. So, and uh, it's very regulated. So that Shraddha Shabdi Vishwas Kahi Sura Dhanashoy. Krishna feeds everybody, just like we're in prison here in the material world. It's already happening. Who could finish the verse? 
Tasyaya veheyto prayate tiko vido Talat yate yat pramatam uparyada Talat yate Tagavaran yata sukhan kale na sarvatra kabira rambasa You still get 20 points if you tell what the verse means. He needs the mic. Just go for it. If you're wrong, you go down in flames. <laughs> it's related to what we're just talking about. It's Narada Muni. And he's talking about how a person who's intelligent, a Kovida, he doesn't endeavor so hard for the necessities of life because he or she knows that those are naturally taken care of. They come in due course of time. The, the logic he gives is that you get bad things in your life, things you didn't actually want, right? Please say yes. 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 Yeah, you keep a little talisman up, a lot of little insignias. In America, we use a horseshoe. That's supposed to bring good luck. Uh -huh. I could never figure out the rabbit's foot thing, but that's a thing in America for good luck. In India, you find Lakshmi everywhere, outside the house, inside the house, little shoes here and there. Invite Lakshmi to come in the house. Doesn't necessarily mean you won't get any bad things, right? Right. Oh, only one person. Yeah. yeah. So, just as you as those reversals of fortune come, so similarly, then the good things will come too naturally. Everything comes by the will of, by the course of time. Kalina Sarvata Kapira and so. So you don't have to try so hard. So a person who's fixed in bhakti Shraddha feels that if I dedicate my heart and mind and work to Krishna, then naturally uh, everything's there. And I'll, I'll perfectly develop in all ways, materially, psychologically, spiritually, just by doing bhakti. And so that's, uh, that's faith. How do we get there? Talking about faith. Those three things from this morning's sloka. Yeah. Shraddha, Rati, Bhakti. So Shraddha awakens by Sadhusanga. And this is uh, the way that Bhak that uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches about the importance of Sadhusanga. He says uh, Krishna Bhakti Janma Mool. Uh, that it's the Janma Mool. It's the basis of all bhakti, is association with sadhus. And that uh, the birth of devotional service uh, takes place when we meet a devotee. And he says also uh, that when we come in faith to devotional service, even when we develop prema, that's still maintained by sadhusanga. So Srila Prabhupada had gone up the stairs, he went, he sat before his spiritual master, and just within a fraction of a second, his guru recognized something in him, because just like Narada Muni, he's described as one who can enter the hearts of all. He's so spiritually potent, he can see into the hearts of all living entities. And similarly, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur recognized something in this young person who had come to see him. And he gave him an instruction right away. Does anybody know? Can re you remember how Prabhupada described it? I just said it a minute ago. Yeah. Can you say it again? Uh, to uh, preach the... You only get, uh, it only counts with the money. I can shout with the online. Still, they still can't hear you. I see. Okay. Yes. Okay. The, to preach, he told him to preach the message of Mahaprabhu in the English-speaking audience. Yes. So, just in that in that moment, uh, Prabhupada's heart was touched by the order of the spiritual master, and then that grew from that seed. He said, from that day. It was incubated for 12 years before he took initiation. And he was always meditating on the order of his spiritual master. And even he thought about how to spread Krishna consciousness. And then he finally was able to execute the order fully by coming to 
the United States and then going around the world. And it all came for that one brief encounter with his Guru Maharaj, where he had received an order. So, in the Bhagavatam, Prabhupada writes that the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is a manifestation of his internal potency. And it is by that potency that one comes to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. So from, from sadhus, one of the ways that we get mercy is by getting service. Because devotees have service, they've received it, and they fully execute the service, or they've executed to the best of their ability, and then they have service to share with others. So, sadhu sangha, one of the deep meanings of sadhu sangha is to receive ser service from a devotee. Who's received service from a devotee? Who's received service from a devotee? In this way, we get a meaning in our life. Without having service to the pure devotees, then we don't have any meaning in our life. We just have working hard for no real reason. You know what that's called? According to the Srimad Bhagavatam? Shrama. Shrama. Everyone say Shrama. 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 Shrama is not good. It means working hard for no, no tangible result or purpose. Shrama. Because when, as we discussed this morning, when you work hard in the material world, ultimately, pa 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 ma. It, it's all for naught, N-A-U-G-H-T. You lose it, ultimately. But then there's ashrama, which means a place where you work for the highest purpose. So that's when we get the order of the Supreme Personality of God. In. So the, the way that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke about six four items of devotional service was that he explicated all of them, he listed all the 64, and then he gave five. And he said, these five are so potent that even if you don't have faith in them, but you have a little connection with them, even a little bit, alpam means small, you'll still come to the perfectional stage by regularly touching with these five. Wow. So one of them is sadhu sangha, if you associate with devotees. So it's important to cultivate sadhu sangha. One of the ways is to pray for it. Pray for association with devotees. One of the ways I like to pray before I chant japa is to ask the Lord, please give me the best of association and the intelligence and wherewithal to take advantage of it. Because as we were speaking in the car on the way home from the airport yesterday, we may come into good association, but we may not be able to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. There may be great association, and then we have some other thing to do. But to have free and clear association with advanced devotees is the path to advancement in devotional service, so we should pray for it and try to get it as much as possible. Another way that's recommended by Bhaktivinoda Thakur to advance in devotional service is to remember the sadhus. What is a sadhu, by, by the way, anyway? Like the word, where does it come from? What sadhu come from? Anybody know Prabhu? He, Prabhu said eternal. I'll just repeat it for him. Actually, <clears throat> there's three words that are related that we're all familiar with, probably. One of them is sadhana. Everyone say sadhana. Sadhana. So, Sadhana means you're working, you're practicing towards a sadhya or, or a goal. So we, we have a goal. And according to the sadhya, according to the goal that you're trying to attain, then you take a particular kind of practice. So our practice is bhakti because our goal is prema. Prema pumartam mahan. The ultimate goal of life is to develop prema for Krishna. So all of the practices that we're doing are meant to bring us to the point of prema, reawakening love for Krishna that's dormant within our hearts. And then, what is the name of a person who's practicing sadhana? Sadhaka. Sadhu. Sadhu or sadhaka, yeah. So a sadhu is somebody who's working towards a sadhya. 
and that that's the main purpose in their life is to come to the goal. They may have other things to do, or they may not be very good at doing devotional service at the particular at this particular time. In fact, they may have worldly attractions or associations. Is that possible? Yeah. That somebody has the goal of developing prema, but they're really kind of mixed up in the material world still? Is that possible? Yeah. Yes. What does Krishna think about such a person? He still likes him. Okay. Madhva Prabhu said he still likes him and he'll back that up with a very important verse from the Bhagavatam since somebody yes. gives him the microphone. Could we have the mic back? Uh, the mic. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Who? Madhva. What does she say? <laughs> give proof. You have to give proof, like in the court of law. And you make a point that you, you gave a philosophical point. Krishna. And that is that Krishna still likes you if your goal is prema. And that's your full intention, but you're distracted. You may even exhibit some worldliness or a lot of it. Krishna is Bhavad Graha Janardana. He sees only the good things uh, and he ignores the rest, the garbage. So this is his character. That's why he he loves us still, even though we are abominable and Can you external. give an example of where that term came from and who was involved in why Krishna saw the good in him? Um, Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj. Mm -hmm. This comes up in that section of the Bhagavatam. Bali Maharaj was in a demoniac line. He comes from a line of demons. That's one strike against you. And then he was engaged in a big sacrifice after he had stolen the heavenly kingdom from Indra. That's not very nice, right? Not at all. Say yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, then the Supreme Personality of God had went to visit Bali in what form? Who can do the Bharatanatyam version? Does anybody know the mudra or, to, or can stand like Bali Maharaj? Do you know about Bharatanatyam? Oh, Havi Prabhu can do it. <laughs> can do anything. Um, Bali Maharaj, yeah, you know it? He's thinking, he's thinking. Oh, good, good, show. Yeah, so these are beautiful because Supreme Lord is a person he came to Bali Maharaj as a beautiful boy. In fact, one of the most beautiful forms mentioned in the Lagu Bhagavad Tamrita of Krishna is Vanam. You can't take your eyes off him. He's so beautiful. The, he's just charming. He's a young boy. He's got a Brahmin's thread. He's got a little umbrella. I mean, he, he's so cute and beautiful. No one could, No one could resist him. So he went in and... Bali was giving charity at the time, so here's this little boy, Brahman. King says, what would you like? It's three paces of land. Come on. Come on you can take more, something more. So if I'm not satisfied with three paces of land, I won't be satisfied with three islands. You can give me huge kingdoms, I won't be happy, because the main point of satisfaction is my senses have to be controlled. So all I need is just three paces of land, some place can lie down, that's no problem. Of course, he saw greatness in Bali, because at that time when Bali Maharaj saw Vamandev, he thought, he's so beautiful, I want to surrender to him. That was in his heart. So later, when uh, it was revealed, yeah, go ahead and say it. No, I just wanted to say that uh, it, it, it's even more intense because it's even more intense because Shukracharya told him, don't do it. And he went against the order of his spiritual master. And this is even, I mean, like, he did something totally unusual. Like, he, he totally ignored karma and everything. He ignored everything. He really surrendered totally. Like, he just... He totally surrendered. He went against his guru. And, of course, Vaman 
then expanded in such a way that he took away everything that Bali thought he had. We all think we have something. It all belongs to Krishna. It's government property. You've got to give it back. And after he chastised Bali by tying him up, ropes of Varuna, and Bali tolerated. And then it's mentioned that Vamadev gave him so much opulence. But what, what to speak of, he gave himself. He became his doorkeeper and won't leave his side. Sometimes people like Durvas came to ask Vaman if he could help come fight in certain wars. And he said, no, not without the permission of Bali. I'm sold out to him. So why? Because Baba Grahi Janardana, and he knew in the heart of Bali that he had this intention of surrendering. And even if he couldn't do it at the time, he, Vamadev, recognized the essence that he wanted to surrender. But I'm looking at from reverse from Bhagavad Gita. Not but, and, I'm also looking for famous verse from Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says a sadhu, somebody is, not a sadhu, somebody is sadhu. You still don't get any credit without the mic. You're just testing it before you go. Apichetse duracharo bhavyate hi bhajate hi mam ananya bhag Bajite mam ananya bhag uh, wa- sadhu sadhu eva hi samatya uh, anyway we're Baba Grahi Janana we take the essence <laughs> okay so he said that apichet sudarachado even if your sudarachado means even if you have worldly behavior at the time bhajate mam ananya bhag sadhu eva samanta vyasamya vyavastovisa he said to everybody, he said, you, you have to consider this person saintly because their intention is serve me. And uh, there's the distinction with the, when your intention is right. Sometimes we have these programs in America. I don't know if you have them here, but it's called meetup.com. Have you ever heard of that? You register your group, and then people look in to see what your programs are, and they can come to your programs, whether they're, they're at your house or temple or something. And so a lot of spiritual seekers go around. So many people from Meetup, they'll see it on the web, and then they'll come to your program. And many of them have heard of Krishna, so they say that Krishna is a thing. Definitely a thing. But devotees say Krishna is... The thing. The thing. the thing. the thing. That's the distinction. There's nothing more. Krishna is the thing. Everyone said. Krishna is the thing. That's our heart. Krishna is the thing. He's everything. And so when a person has that determination, Krishna is the thing, Krishna says, okay, you may be externally not up to the standard now, but because that's your decision in your heart that I'm the thing, then this person, Krishna's saying, this person, you have to consider, he's telling all of us, you consider this person a saintly person, a sadhu, because the determination is right. Then he tells Arjuna to declare it boldly. Sri Pam Bhavati Dharma Shantum Nagashati Kamteya Pratijari Inami Bhakti Pranashati. He said, you declare it out loud to the whole world that this person is going to come to the perfect stage because of this determination within his or her heart. So this is the determination of a sadhu. Krishna is the thing. And the person is dedicated to becoming Krishna's devotee. Has this faith that if I am able just to give myself my attention to Krishna, and everything else is done. So one of the other ways to, to develop love for sadhus is to remember the sadhus to hear about them. And there's a beautiful song. If somebody can equip... Havi Prabhu, do you want to sit up here in a chair and play the harmonium on this fan? I do whatever you ask me to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll beg you to play the harmonium, but uh, do you want to sit up with, like this? You can, but it's better if you sit in the chair. For you, what's better technically? Te- like technically, what's better? Sitting down. Okay. 
somebody mind moving this harmonium down for Hubby Prabhu? I'd like to welcome His Grace Hubby Prabhu, who is a disciple of Srila Prabhupada since the early 70s and has uh, been lighting up the world with his bhajan ever since. And uh, we're going to uh, sing a song that's in your songbook about okay. the devotees. Okay. You can the mic on. And I'll teach you a, a line from it and we'll go over the translation. It goes like this. Ajastra smara smara re. Ajastra smara smara. Uh, Ray. Ray. Ray means like, oh, this is amazing. So Ajastra, Ajastra Smara Smara Ray, say. Ajastra Smara Smara Ray. Ajastra Smara Smara Ray. Page 56. So, no, no, it's not 56, it's on page 54. And this song is by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and it's, a, it's called Bhajan Gita. And when you sing this song, you'll, you'll hear the names of famous sadhus. So, just by hearing the names of the great devotees, uh, we get spiritual advancement, and... So Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, just a smarter, smarter egg. Just remember, oh, just remember these uh, great sadhus, these great devotees of the Lord. I heard this bhajan once early in the morning at Govardhan Hill, and I was on Parikrama. It was dark. I couldn't see in front of me, except I knew there was a sadhu in front of me singing this song as he was walking along. And practically, he was, had, uh, it sounded like he was had some emotion, tears in his eyes, perhaps. I couldn't see, it was too dark, but that's how his voice sounded. He was by himself, so he wasn't showing off for anybody. It was very early in the morning, and he was singing the song, and I got up close and followed behind him because it was so attractive to, to hear this song. And as soon as I got back, I said, I have to find where this bhajan is. So I searched and I found the bhajan by Bhaktivinoda Thakur that he was singing. And here's the translation. And, uh, We'll just we'll just do a little harmony on the back end. My dear mind, how foolish you are. Oh just worship. Oh just worship the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna in the forest of Radha. Oh, without such worship, there's no means of spiritual advancement. Would you like to read with me? Yeah, let's do it together. Let's start at the top. It's so nice. You're just saying it, you'll feel the devotional power of this song. My dear mind, how foolish you are. Oh, just worship. Oh, just worship the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna in the forest of Raja. Oh, without such worship, there is no means of spiritual advancement. Just worship the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna in the forest of Raja. Oh, giving up all speculative knowledge and materialistic activities. Just worship Gora, Gadadha, Vaita, and Lord Nityananda, the original spiritual master. Oh, knowing that Lord Gora and Lord Krishna to be the same. Oh, knowing the spiritual master to be very dear to Krishna. Just remember the dear associates of Lord Chaitanya, namely Srivas Thakur, Haridas Thakur, Varari Gupta, and Mukunda Datta. Oh, indeed, love for Lord Gora. You should remember, just remember, just remember the two great personalities, Srivas Thakur and Haridas Thakur. Just remember Sri Rupa Goswami, Sanatana, Jiva, and the two Raghunaths. Oh, if you are engaged in worshipping Lord Krishna, just remember the two great souls. Shri Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. Just remember Radha Pandit, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Swarup Dhammada Goswami, and Ramananda Goswami. Oh, if you really see love of Krishna, just remember Swarup Dhammada Goswami and Ramananda Goswami. 
Just remember Srila Kavi Karnapur and all his family members, especially his father, Shivana the same. Oh, always remember, always remember. Just for Smara Smarane. She, Kavi Karnapur and his family. Just remember all the sadhus who follow the path of Sri Rupa Goswami and who are absorbed in the ecstasy of Bhajana. Oh, if you actually want resonance in the land of Bhajana, just remember the sadhus who are followers of Srila Rupa Goswami. Bhajade, Bhajade
mentioned in this beautiful song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur is Shivananda Sain. So Shivananda Sain is one of the devotees. Hare Krishna. Does everyone have a seat? Do, I think they're looking for the booklet. Marge. A booklet? Booklets now are $100. So, <laughs> so, come, 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 please come in. The, um, so you move a little bit so we yeah, can... Yeah, I'll move up by... Lila of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita goes into the most esoteric presentation of Sri Mahaprabhu Lila. And we find the very beginning of the Anti Lila. Can somebody please bring here up here? So, first let me give a little preamble. Is everyone okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
So, in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll find Krishna speaking to Uddhava about the various systems of advancing spiritual life, jnana yoga, and then there's the process of yoga and sankhya. Many of these chapters are very long, karma yoga. They're thick chapters. It takes a long time to read them. And then you come to the chapter on bhakti. It's a very short chapter. You'd be surprised, as many of you have already read this section, but the bhakti section is very simple. Krishna says that you should see that he's within everyone's heart. And you should offer licenses to the Lord within the heart of every living being. Of course, we also try to follow the Lord's instruction to do good to others. And he's most pleased by that, as he says in the Bhagavad Gita. Shivananda Sain used to take the devotees from Navadvip all the way to Puri. They stay for four months together with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They joyfully walked all the way from Navadvip. They'd all bring gifts, Raghunath. There's Damayanti, who cooked for the Lord. And she brought bags. They had several people to carry them because she cooked enough for the Lord to eat for one whole year continuously. In her bags, they brought all kinds of gifts. So as they started off, you can imagine all the great souls who were there in the party at Waitashar. Sometimes Lord Nityananda was traveling with him. And all the devotees of Navadvip who were only thinking of Mahaprabhu 24 hours a day, he had gone away and taken sannyas and left them. In fact, even today, we worship the deity with Gordon Thai, we don't worship Lord Jaitanya as a sannyasi because in the mood of the devotees in Navadri, they're always worshiping the Lord with this beautiful hair. And the clothes and bangles that he wore there, so attractive. They couldn't stop thinking of him. So you get the opportunity to go see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu once a year. What a beautiful party that was walking on the roads, getting on boats together. Going on Yantra is so nice. You get on boats together and you sing the holy names, then you go to holy places. And they were going to the best of all places, to be with Mahaprabhu. So one day when they set out, a dog came and approached the party of Mahabhagavata. And the dog was hopeful to join the, join the team. Dogs like to run in packs. And this dog, so it was fortunate because it saw the, the devotees and thought, yeah, I'll be part of this one. <laughs> Let me join. And Shiva and the same saw the dog and said, you're with us. This is the heart of the devotee. All looking through the world at every second, thinking, who's going to be a treasure? How can I bring in? They try to create circumstances where people See it and get a trap, and then they can be brought in. She looks it out to Sarah to to put on these Harinam festivals. On the outside, they have cotton candy. Mm. You know candy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's good and good for you. <laughs> Very nutritious. <laughs> One of the superfoods of the world. <laughs> Cotton candy Ferris wheels. <laughs> Kids and families see Ferris wheels like, Mommy, Mommy, Daddy, Daddy. Right on the Ferris wheel, give me cotton candy. So they go there, and then as you see the outskirts of this Hari Nam festival, there is fun and games. And as you come closer and closer, there's Hari Nam and exhibit about the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the inside. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati wanted to attract people. He'd create a situation where everyone would look and get attracted and come closer and closer. So a sadhu 
one always looking around, thinking, how can I help another? Who's going to be attracted? You can see it in their eyes. In Japan, there's a rule that you're not supposed to look at anybody. Like on trains, you know, everyone pretend they're looking straight ahead. Of course, if you're a foreigner or a big, gigantic American sitting there, you catch them every once in a while. They're, hey, you looked at me. <laughs> like, yeah, I blew it. Totally blew it. So on the street, when we have hard time, they come along, and if they stop, and look, you know they're interested. Because that's, they're tacitly saying, actually, it's not tacit, it's direct. They're saying, according to the culture, like, I'm into this. They just stopped for a minute and look at the Harinam, right, Mava? Yes. Mava was in Japan for many years. He had a beautiful restaurant there and did Harinam and everything in, in Japan. And so the devotees are always looking around. They're scanning who's interested, where's that spark? And then they want to bring him closer. So Shivananda Sain, the great sadhu, he saw the dog and he looked in the dog's eyes and he said, he wants to be with us, with the devotees. He wants to go to Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's his heart. See, the people who are on the lowest level, they judge people according to their past. That's what they did in the past. Somebody more advanced, they say, forget the past, this is how they are now. So we accept you now, how you are. But the most advanced, the sadhus, they see people for their future. What's their potential? And so Shivananda saying, saw the dog, he's with us, he's a devotee. Bring and then he ordered the cook, you have to feed him every day. You make him his nice two cups of rice so the dog can eat. You see the dogs in India, they're hungry. You see them walking around, they're hungry. You can feed them stuff. And they'll, they'll look at you like, okay, you're my friend. <laughs> so he ordered that the cook, you make sure he gets fed his rice every day. Take care of him. How much did he take care of him? They got to one of the boats. And the boatman said, no dogs. We don't take these dogs on our boat. She even had the same call them aside. said, tell you what, I'll give you a little extra. He paid for the dog. He paid for the dog to get on the boat. His heart was invested in the dog. He wanted him to come to Jagannath Puri. He was with the Vaishnavas. He didn't consider whether he was an animal or a human. He just had his heart that this person wanted to come with us. And then... One day, because Shiva and the Saint had to take care of all the lodgings and he'd go ahead of, of the party. And he got back late because it was a, there was a long distance for him to cover. And when he got back, hey, where's the dog? The dog wasn't there, so he asked, well, did you feed him? He said, no, we forgot to feed him. He became so morose, his heart actually hurt because he had taken this dog as inconfident that I'm going to take you to Krishna, I'm going to take you to Lord Chaitanya, and now he, uh, I betrayed you. So this is the heart of a Vaishnava. I was thinking, like, how, how can I bring this soul along in Krishna consciousness? This is how the heart of a, of a sadhu aches, that I, I want to see other people come into Krishna consciousness. Para dukhi, they suffer because of the sufferings of others. Para sukasuki. They're happy when they see other people happy in Krishna consciousness. So all the devotees caught this morose feeling from Shiva and the same. They saw how distressed he was that they lost the dog. And they all were lamenting. And they came to Puri in a, in a very downtrodden state, uh, their hearts aching. But then when they came to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they found that the dog was sitting with him dog was sitting there and Mahaprabhu from his own plate was taking some remnants, green coconut pulp and he was tossing it to the dog he'd catch it and then he'd say chant Krishna and Mahaprabhu had this rasa going on with the dog so Shivan the saying saw this and he came and he offered obeisances to the dog because he wanted to clear his offenses to the dog. He thought, he's a better devotee than me. He's sitting with Mahaprabhu, and I, I made an offense. I didn't take care of him enough. And then the next day, the dog was gone. He went back to God, says Kaviraj Goswami. Oh. Oh. 
this is the, the mood of, of the devotees. They're thinking about how I can help other living entities come to Krishna consciousness and go back home, back to Godhead. This is their satisfaction. This is the heart of a sadhu. So if someone comes in the company of a sadhu, then we'll find that sadhu is always looking to see how can I help this person uh, become conscious, giving instruction and teaching everything that he or she learned in Krishna consciousness. There's a famous devotee in our movement, and she's the daughter of Kripa Moy Prabhu, the famous um, sadhu, famous as a sadhu, an expert in all the aspects of devotional service. Everybody knows Kripa Moy Prabhu, right? Yeah. yeah. Excellent yeah. singer. He knows uh, all the shastras. He does bhujas. He does weddings. And do you know his famous uh, daughter? He, of course, there, his wife's famous too, Guru Charan Padma, Devi Dasi. I know her because I used to go on Sankatan with her at O'Hare Airport back in the 70s. And then, uh, do you know his two daughters? Yes. yes. Yeah, what's her name? For 20 times. Janvi Harrison. Janvi Harrison? <laughs> okay. But now she has an initiated name, right? Yeah. Janava Jeevani. Janava Jeevani. And what's her other sister's name? Tulsi. Tulsi. They're all famous. It's a whole famous family of, of Vaishnavas. So, Janava Jeevan. Janava, Janava Jeevani uh, tells a story when she's, uh, it's recorded, it's a, a videotape. There's no more tapes, but <laughs> you say that. So there's. She was growing up, and a lot of Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, when they're growing up, they're not sure about their career track. Am I a devotee because I was born in this family? And is it my choice? Or is it just because that's what everyone expected me to be growing up? Anybody here grew up in a devotee family? Yeah. So, yeah. Have you ever seen that? Phenomena at a certain age, like around maybe 16 or 17. Have you seen it? Yes. Can you say anything about it? Like that My liminal name. space? We'd like to share the mic with you. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, I can't really speak for others so much, but what I've observed, it seems like at a certain point, uh, the body is changing and becoming a young adult and at that time the hormones are changing there's a lot of confusion and within that confusion the living entity starts to check out the material world and oh what's this uh, oh what's that you know there's so much advertising there's so much Kali Yuga bombardment outside of our immediate devotee communities in the outside world that it can be quite overwhelming for a young devotee to be exposed to an unprotected environment. Uh, it starts with school, outside school, uh, playground stuff, and then it goes from there to hanging out with non-devotees on the weekends, and then it kind of escalates. So at some point, the living entity has to make a choice, uh, Maya or Krishna. And, uh, each individual has their free will to choose. Um, but when that choice is made of free will, um, generally most of uh, the second generation devotees excel pretty amazingly, mm. in my observation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for laying it out for us. It's really important. And it's also important to, about how it's free will. Because once we make it a decision ourselves that I'm going to surrender to Krishna, Krishna is the thing, and I'm going to give my life to Krishna. I don't have to be the center anymore. I want Krishna to be the center. Of course, that's a very advanced stage, but that's my intention. Then there's no more obstacle. There may be some obstacles, but there no match for that intention that one develops within the heart. That's the... The, the focal point 
the fulcrum, that's the fulcrum of, of power in devotional service, is one's resolute intention. If we have that resolute purpose, then we'll be successful no matter what. So sometimes, at a certain age, devotees wonder that, that uh, am I really going to be a devotee? Should I? What about the rest of the world? What about my other opportunities and so forth? He's all going through. So Jadavagini talks about how she and her family went to Sharnagati. Do you know where that is? It's a farm up in Canada, not too far from Vancouver, I believe. And it's a dev big devotee farm, obviously. And there was living a, a very famous sadhu, <coughs> female sadhu. Her name was Jamuna Dasi. Mm. She was uh, one of uh, Prabhupada's earliest disciples, very famous a devotee for not just singing, but also cooking, and also, uh, most of all, known for being fixed in a, a, this redundant, for her guru, Nishta. She was determined to serve her guru, and totally fixed in service to the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada as her eternal spiritual master. So, she, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes in the Chaitanya Charamena, had Assets of the sadhu. And what did sadhus have? According to Chaitanya, what do they have? Hymns and instructions. And they're doctors. You know doctors carry a little black bag? What do they have inside? For the devotee doctors, they have hymns, mantras. I have a mantra for you. And they also have an instruction how to, how to work the mantra. So when they went and stayed at the home of Nasi describes how after a few days of watching this sadhvi, this um, devotee who was fully dedicated, she never stopped chanting, she was always engaged, always praying to Krishna, offering to Krishna, teaching how to cook, everything about Krishna. In that environment, when she came out, she got into the car, they were leaving, she was sitting in the back seat. And it came through her in a visceral way. She could feel it through her whole body, upper spine, throughout her system, that I've met the person who's my ideal in life. I want to be like her. I want to be a devotee. And this is the power of association with sadhus. They give us the most valuable asset, which is shraddha faith in Krishna that if I become like this then I'll be perfect if I could just be like this person then everything will be good in my life I'll be fully satisfied and happy I want to be that person I want to follow in his or her footsteps and become a devotee so this is uh, the most valuable asset and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that the devotees wander around the universe, like Narada Muni, even when he was a child, before he became the famous Narada Muni, he was wandering, and after he attained liberation, he still wanders. And what does he do? He goes everywhere, and he gives his association so that people can have that same feeling that Janava Jivani felt, that Krishna is the thing, and my main purpose in life is to become his devotee, and I want to be like that devotee. That's my ideal in life. And when we have that, there's nothing else to be had. That's the perfection of life. And we get it from the heart of the sadhus who love Krishna so much. And they go about the world sharing their association with others. Now, sometimes people get that to a small degree. And then they leave the world. They come back in the next life. And they have a predisposition. They're predisposed to devotional service. They'll see devotees on the street and they'll say hey, that looks like a good idea. They have no idea why. They just think, these are good people. I, th I think they're doing a good thing. This is the, the awakening of Shraddha. In the Brihat Narodiya Purana, it is mentioned, as quoted by Bhaktivinoda Thakur in the Jaiva Dharma, that 
When one gets sadhu sangha, one gets assets, and it's called bhakti unmukhi sukriti. It's actual wealth. And we have, every one of us, feel right here, you have a bank account in here. Take a note, check it out. No, go ahead, put your hands there. You have a bank account in here. <laughs> Prabhupada said this. You have a bank account in your heart, and every time you get sadhu sangha, you get a deposit inside. Briyat Nardi Parana says, when you get enough deposit in the heart, <coughs> then what's born is Shraddha. And Shraddha starts with a feeling that, I think devotees are good people. I think whatever this chanting they're doing, I have no idea what it is, but it's good. We made a film around our Harinam as a documentary film, and there was this young woman who worked at a store, retail store on the same street where we frequent. And she said, I don't know who these people are, and I don't know what this chanting is, but it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beginning of the, this is the awakening of faith. And then with more sadhusanga, with more association, which is what one gets after a shraddha, then one gets this idea that well, I'll just go spend time with these people. And then as one spends time with the sadhus, and a sadhu who's following a sadhu, who's following a sadhu, who's following a sadhu, is fully potent to deliver Krishna consciousness to others because it's like a mango being passed down to the trees. And those who are devotees of pure devotees are also pure devotees. They impart the same vibration that is coming from the pure devotee. And so those people then they associate and then they become fully integrated into the spiritual family that takes them back to the spiritual world. And they start with Bhajana Kriya, which means they get into the practice, they say, whatever devotees are doing, I'm going to do that too. In fact, we started a project during the pandemic to collect faithful people in an online community because we couldn't get together in person. And the main goal was... We didn't want to sell them anything. We didn't want to collect any money from them. We didn't want them to do anything except come back. That was our main goal, our stated goal. All you have to do is come back. Whatever we can do to make them keep coming back, because we knew, according to the Shastra, if people associate with devotees, gradually they'll start acting like devotees by association. It's just a natural course. Sadhu Sangha. And that's what happens. Then they all of a sudden they'll say, I want to do this. And once they have that determination, you can't stop them. We had this little program a long time ago called Bhakti Life that we started in San Jose, California. All, all we took the time for, I would say all we had time for, but all we took the time for was to have a meeting once a month. And there was people started coming. A couple, uh, there was quite a few people. There was two, these two ladies uh, Western, who came and they were interested in bhakti. And at the time, we were trying to present it in such a way that it wouldn't disturb the minds of a, a Western audience. And we were pulling a lot back from the very straightforward presentation of Krishna consciousness. And as they became more Krishna conscious by being in the association, they started being more demanding. They say, wait a minute, you're not telling us everything. <laughs> and by the way, we know you have some temple around here somewhere. Where is it? Because we're doing it in somebody's house. And we hadn't revealed everything to them. And one day they practically burst into the program. And they said, we found it. We got neck beads. And we got... <laughs> so this is the sprouting of bhakti when it comes up in the heart. And it's a very powerful force that comes from the sadhu sangha. And then people want to become engaged in devotional service. They let me do this too. Let me in. I want to be a part of this whole program. So this whole Krishna consciousness movement is meant to impart devotee association to all the people of the world. We are not an insular society. We are meant to be open and fluid and bringing people in. As one pastor, not in Krishna conscious movement, but he's a preacher in the Christian um, faith says 
It's not how many people you seat, it's how many people you send that counts. It means he's training people to go out and bring more people back in. And this is the, the uh, nature of sadhus, as Prahlad Maharaj himself said, and this was the mood of Prabhupada, I don't want to go to the caves and the mountains, remote place, and just become shanti, shanti, shanti. So I want to go to the busiest place and I want to be there so that I can do good for the people who are living in the big cities and towns and who are overwhelmed by Maya. And they've taken this huge burden on their heads. So one of the ways that this happens is the devotees go out and they sing in the streets. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote several songs about the um, preaching of Krishna consciousness and some of them are, he wrote, that these are for pr patrolling about town. How are we doing for time, by the way? Did I already go over? So he wrote, he writes in a notation of these songs from Sharanakati and Gitavali, that these are for patrolling about town. So the devotees would go around and they would sing these songs and it would attract the people. They'd hear them, of course they're in Bengali, but they're beautiful songs and people would hear them and then they'd want to also join in the kirtan and go home with the devotees, take prasad and also take up the life of going back home, back to Godhead. So one of the songs, it goes like this. It's uh, about Chaitanya and Nityananda, and they're dancing down the streets of Nadia, and they're singing and inviting everybody to please come and chant Hare Krishna. Does that sound like a worthwhile occupation? Yes! Let's get work if you can get it. It goes like this. Radha Krishna Bol 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 Arisho Page number? Radha Krishna Bol 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 Arisho Bhai Shishi Radha Krishna Bol 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 Arisho
Thank you.